Hello and welcome to this video in which we compute the discrete time Fourier transform of a discrete time exponential signal. This is a useful example of computing a discrete time Fourier transform and it also uh, shows some interesting, this result is actually useful on its own. So um, the idea is that we have x of n and n is a discrete time exponential signal, it looks like this. And so it starts off at a value of 1 when n is equal to 0 and then decays exponentially. And our goal is to compute the discrete time Fourier transform of this. And so we'll just go right ahead and do it. This actually turns out not to be that difficult. So you'll remember that the discrete time Fourier transform of x of n is given as a summation n going from minus infinity to infinity of x of n, which in this case is a of n, u of n, times e to the minus j n omega. Okay, so the first thing to do to simplify this is we remember that for values of n less than 0, x of n is 0. So that means that that's essentially what this u of n is doing here. So we can write this then as the summation n going from 0 to infinity, a of n, and when n is between 0 and infinity, u of n is 1, so we can just drop that, e to the minus j n omega. Okay, so far so good. And now we can write this, we notice that this is a to the n, this term here is e to the minus j omega raised to the nth power. And so I have a to the n times e to the minus j omega raised to the nth power. I can actually write this term that I'm summing as a e to the minus j omega, all of this raised to the nth power. Okay, why do I want to do that? Well, this is now a geometric series. With This is the term uh, a e to the minus j omega is the term that's getting raised to the power. And I know how to sum these guys. Uh, let's see, we'll bring up an empty page here. We'll rewrite this and 0 to infinity a e to the minus j omega, this raised to the nth power. This is going to be equal to 1 over 1 minus a e to the minus j omega. Uh, again, this is basically just the formula for the sum of a geometric series. So, um, in a sense, we're done. This is the, whoops, this is the um, Fourier transform of this guy. And we could actually do some more work on it, but I'm not sure that that would be that useful uh, with a good, uh, uh, with a program that handles complex numbers like MATLAB or uh, NP uh, NumPy. Uh, you can plot this guy. And when we do, we get something that looks like this. This is the, this is the real part of the Fourier transform, badly drawn, and this is going from 0 to 2 pi, and this is the imaginary part. And again, the uh, axis down here is omega going from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so we can also draw the um, the magnitude, and it looks like this, and the phase angle looks like this. So you can see that the magnitude is uh, largest when the frequency is small, and then the magnitude decreases. Once it gets out to pi, then the magnitude starts to increase again, uh, because um, pi actually, so pi corresponds to the highest frequency you can look at with uh, 
the discrete time Fourier transform because it's periodic. After this, it just starts to go back up. Now, you'll notice um, we have x of n is a real function. And if we go back to the plot of the real and imaginary parts, you'll notice that the real part is an even function. And um, the imaginary part is an odd function. OK, I can actually see this more clearly if I think about um, taking this graph and extending it out this way, which I can do because it's periodic. So if you look about 0, uh, if I had drawn this well, uh, this guy would be the mirror image of this guy. And similarly here, this guy would look like the um, inverted mirror image. So the real part, because x of n is entirely real, the real part of the Fourier transform is even. The imaginary part of the Fourier transform is odd. And the magnitude of the Fourier transform is even. And the angle of the Fourier transform is odd. So that's a useful uh, property. It actually is very helpful uh, to check to make sure you're doing things right when you've got an answer. So hopefully this has been useful in terms of how to do this computation. And uh, this concludes this video.